So, all right, so let's talk about Instagram strategy as a creator or as a business. And uh, let me start with what you might typically hear out there uh, as, as the Instagram strategy. And by the way, I'm not making fun of anybody who's teaching Instagram. I'm just basically saying, uh, listen, I've heard about these strategies. I've read about them. Uh, I've tried them myself. And uh, I don't think they are the most, you know, I, I would call authentic and, and simple uh, ways to, to build an Instagram uh, sort of presence. All right. So first of all, um, you might hear from people that uh, I'm just going to stop the screen share because the document keeps turning different colors depending on who's highlighting it. Right. Um, so the first thing that you might learn elsewhere is, oh, if you go on Instagram, you got to post pretty pictures. The, 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 most, the more striking the images, the, most, the more beautiful and artistic the images, the more likes you're going to get and the more followers you're going to get. And isn't that what we're all after? More likes and followers? I'm pausing for effect because, uh, well, it's a good question, right? Are we just trying to get more followers and more, 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 more likes on our things? And maybe... Uh, you know, I'd, I'd be curious to know what your kind of initial response is to that. Are we simply trying to get more followers and more likes and more comments and more shares? I'll just put, I'll throw those in too, right? Well, I'll, I'll keep going here. My answer is no, we're not trying to get more followers or likes or comments or shares unless they are the right followers and the right likers and the right commenters and the right sharers. Because it's actually not hard to get hundreds of likes on any Instagram image. You just post a pretty image, preferably of, you know, a model looking person. So I, I put myself out of the running right there. <laughs> you, you post a pretty image, right? And then you use hashtags like happy and love and popular hashtags that will get, get you hundreds of likes in no time like that. Is that a good strategy? You'll get lots of followers. Maybe you'll get over the 10, the fable 10K, right? Or at least the initial 10K. But then what happens is you have an audience of people who don't actually care about your products or your services or your real message. And what happens when you have a fake audience on Instagram is that when you start posting your real message, right? Not just your pretty pictures and whatever, but you're actually you know, posting messages related to your business. The organic reach is gonna be so pitiful because the way the organic reach works, works on Instagram, and so does, this is the same as how it works on Facebook as well, is that Instagram will show your image or your video in batches. They first show it to some organic, some of your organic audience, meaning people who already follow you. And if they scroll past it, if they don't care about it, right, then Instagram will, will, will basically kill it. I mean, in, in the algorithm, in the newsfeed, they're not gonna show it to a lot more people. But if the original, if the first batch of people you, they, they show it to, good engagement, right? Especially meaningful engagement. If there are comments that are just more than hearts, hearts, fire, fire, or whatever. But if there's some meaningful comments or even shares or saves of your Instagram post, then they're going to show it to a lot more of your followers. So in other words, if you're building an Instagram following, that is a fake following, meaning people who don't really, they just like it because you have pretty images and you use popular hashtags then when you start using real messages, you're like, how come uh, my, my organic posts are getting dead, zero reach, unless I post a pretty picture with popular hashtags? Well, now you know. So it would, it's actually more, um, like I said, I think it's more authentic, but it's also more sustainable of a strategy when you just try to reach the right people because then your data is always correct and you're always growing at a very uh, actually manageable pace because you don't want to suddenly get flooded with a bunch of spam and direct messages or people trying to pitch you on different things. So it's better to grow at a manageable pace with the right followers because then your organic algorithm reach is always going to be quite, quite the same and growing. Okay. So that's, that's good. So, um, so yeah, so posting pretty pictures, especially selfies. My, my other I guess, complaint uh, around that strategy is that it, uh, have, you, have you heard of the fixed mindset versus the growth mindset? It's from a book called Mindset by Carol Dweck, Stanford uh, researcher, and it's a fantastic book. Um, but the basic idea, I'll just summarize it for you real quick, is that you can either, um, it reminds me a little bit of that story of the bad wolf and the good wolf inside each of us, right? You can either foster a fixed mindset within yourself or a growth mindset. A fixed mindset is, okay, I only have a certain amount of talent that I was born with. 
and I have to keep proving my talent and my excellence. Uh, otherwise, um, you know, I'm going to be irrelevant uh, to people and unloved and unrespected and not have the opportunities, et cetera. So the fixed mindset is I got to keep proving myself. I got to be perfect. I got to make sure I'm always looking good and make sure everything's always good. I, I don't want to disappoint anybody, right? The fixed mindset, I'm probably butchering it a little bit, but it's basically like that. Whereas the growth mindset, the growth mindset, which you can also nurture within yourself is basically, hey, there's nothing I can't accomplish if I set my mind and heart to it, if I have enough practice. In other words, uh, thoughtful practice creates growth, right? And so, the, 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 so that's why like when people post selfies, I'm like, okay, but you're just, you're just emphasizing your fixed mindset subconsciously within yourself. Whereas the growth mindset is really about growth related messages. It's, it's okay to make mistakes, um, that, that type of stuff. So, so the typical strategy, like I said, not good for authenticity, for also for sustainability. The second, the typical strategy is use lots of hashtags, hoping to get discovered. I've already said you get discovered by a lot of the wrong people. Uh, the third typical strategy is that, oh, on Instagram, it's very easy to get lots of followers. You just go ahead and follow a lot of people and then they'll get curious about your profile and they'll come to your profile and they'll follow you back. Some of them will. And then you can, you, and then after you follow you back, you can unfollow them so that your ratio is nice and balanced. You know, you follow a hundred people and then after a week you unfollow the ones who didn't follow you back. It's a, it's a very hacky uh, sort of gimmicky strategy that is being taught out there. And like, you know what? I don't have time. Like, my life purpose isn't about this. Okay. It's like, yeah, it works. Sure. It works. You can follow the people in the audiences that you want to follow you back. And then hopefully, but it's like, what happens is you will notice when you go on Instagram that there is a ratio meaning how many followers do you have versus how many people you're following. Now it's okay to have more people you're following than are following you, but you'll notice if some people are following thousands of more people than are following them, it doesn't look credible, right? Especially for a business. Um, so, uh, you know, it's better to have either similar range of followers follows or even more people following you than you're following. Meaning, you're actually follow. So the best thing that you, you actually want to follow the Instagram profiles, like the NASDAQ entrepreneur center that you actually want to keep up with, that you actually care about their content. You want to make sure you see their latest content or you want to support them. It's either a creator or a company or, or a friend that you want to support or that you're actually genuinely interested in their updates. Follow them. Don't just follow people because you're hoping they'll follow you back because then it messes up your ratio and it's just not a good use of time. Okay. All right, um, uh, other typical strategies, occasionally post testimonials about your product or service. That is a good thing. I would recommend that. Uh, occasionally post videos. I would recommend that as well. Uh, post stories. You know, stories are basically 24 hour posts. They disappear from the newsfeed, from the timeline of your followers after 24 hours. They could no, but they're very, they're very visible in those 24 hours at the top of the timeline. Post those. I, I would agree with that, except I'll show you the way that I teach it is different. It's a little bit more sustainable, but typically people post stories with like countdowns and other kind of gimmicks. I'm like, yeah, but I don't know. It's, it just doesn't feel credible to me. Um, anyway, another, uh, you know, another strategy is you pay for thousands of dollars for highly produced one minute Instagram video ad. And the problem with that is, if you have money to throw away, go for it, right? To, to, to experiment with, go for it, try it out. You know, thousands of bucks is no big deal for you to create a one minute. Great. But for most of us, we can't afford to experiment like that because who knows that one minute video ad might really not work or might draw the wrong audience. How do you know? So I pre really prefer to kind of grow uh, in a very sustainable way. All right. Deep breath. <laughs> And now let's go into what I consider to be a, a, a recommended, a good strategy, especially for authentic content, which I know hopefully many of you, all of you uh, would want to create. Now, I want to also just want to uh, invite Maria, if you want to interrupt me at any time at all, if there are any questions that, that, that you feel are relevant, please interrupt me. And I always like to have a conversation if, whenever possible. So, all right. Um, so, I want to show you my screen again and show you this image here. So basically, this is what I recommend. You nurture 
the right audience with messages related to your business before you then sell occasionally your products or your services. Because the thing is, um, most of us are not so lucky to have a product or service that just random people hear about it, they buy it. I mean, yes, sometimes that happens, but most of us need a warm audience before they, they're going to buy our product or services. I mean, this is true for just about any business. I mean, the warmer the audience, obviously, the more likely they're going to buy. Meaning, and what is a warm audience? A warm audience are the people who have already been engaging with your content, with your images, with your videos. They've already been engaging. So they already are familiar with your brand and that they have some good thoughts about your brand. And so once they've been engaging a while, they, they recognize you, they're familiar with you. And then when you're selling your service or product, they're like, oh yes, I like that brand, that person, that company. And sure, uh, sure, look, they have a new product. How cool, let me check it out, right? People who don't know you, they'll just, oh, that's an ad. They're just gonna keep scrolling. That's most of the time it's like that. So this is why when I run Instagram ads, which I do all the time, the vast majority of my Instagram ad dollars are not to sell my product or service. The vast majority is actually to, to get new people finding me, the right new people finding me, or to nurture the existing audience. And so like that's 80% of my ad budget. The 20% where I then sell my product or services, their ROI becomes 200 to 400%, which means that it more than pays for the, um, you know, uh, it, it at least, at least breaks even to, to that product because then usually people who buy my thing end up buying other things over time. So the, the sort of lifetime value is much greater, but at least breaks even for that month. And then uh, if not, you know, uh, 50 to hundred uh, percent ROI. So, so, so nurture with messages, okay. And then occasionally sell. So how can you, how can you have the right mindset to nurture your audience with messages? I really encourage you, starting today to look at the task of content creation, not as, oh, I'm doing this so I can sell stuff because your audience will sense that too. Okay. But instead, well, kind of like what NASDAQ does here. I mean, the content is just to really, it's really the intention is to serve as many people. Now, not all of us are nonprofits, right? So, but even the for-profit, I'm a for-profit business, but I still look at content as a cause. Uh, you might even say for those who are more spiritually minded as a ministry, my content is a ministry. I just wanna serve people with inspiring or helpful ideas that can better their life, okay? Whether or not they ever buy from me. Now, because I come from that mindset and that heart space, what happens of course is that the audience can sense it, they can sense my care, and uh, so therefore, of course, trust will be earned. It's so funny. I don't believe trust can be built because <laughs> that sounds too calculating. You're like, oh, I'm going to build trust so I can sell. No, 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 you earn trust by being authentic and consistent with that authenticity and that generosity. So I really encourage you to think of content as a service in itself. It's like a free service for people who are your potential client, potential customer type but you don't require any one person to buy from you. You're serving the whole audience knowing that if you serve them well, your audience is gonna grow. And of course, some of them are gonna buy from you. So of course, the bigger your audience and the more you care and show them your care, your conversion rate is also going to go up. But that's just, that's just a natural byproduct of, 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 of serving people well. Um, the other thing is that, the other ways I think about content is it's also about exploring your perspectives. Because as a brand, as a person, as a company, you have perspectives about your industry. You have perspective about what is the right way to serve your customers. What is the right kind of product that your customers need? Uh, what is um, the right way to use your product? I mean, whatever it is, you have perspectives and you're using content to share those genuine perspectives to say, hey, this is, I hope this is helpful. And hopefully it's not like buy our product first and then you can use this content, but it's more like whether or not you have our product, hopefully this is, here's a tip. Here's some, a story that will inspire you or a tip that will help move you forward. Um, also, uh, yeah, so that's, that's really content. You can see more in the document and you can ask questions in the document if you want to. Um, okay, so the next part is to reframe selling. Okay, I know a lot of you, um, <laughs> you, you wrote uh, in the poll that, you know, marketing and sales keeps you up at night, right? 
So hopefully with this little reframe, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll sleep better and you'll, you'll do selling more effectively. Selling to me is really a matter of alignment rather than persuasion. So it's really about, hey, I'm, I, now that I have your attention, now that I have earned your trust with just showing up as my genuine, generous self consistently, I have this, I have this thing that in, in my business, a product or service that I'm really excited about that I think is a good match for you because of how I've gotten to know you and I've created this thing or framed this thing as being helpful to you. So is this helpful? Let me know. What do you think about this product or service? So I kind of use selling as a way to like humbly experiment with whether I've got it right. This framing of this product or service, did I get it right? Do you want to buy it? It's very humble. It's not like you better buy it, blah, 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 scarcity, you know, persuasion. No, no, just, hey, will you buy it? Because what I've learned over 10 years of successful marketing and many, many times unsuccessful marketing, that's how we learn a lot, is that if the product is the right fit for an audience that trusts you, if the product is the right fit for an audience that trusts you, all you have to do is whisper about the product and you'll get enough sales. Now, if the product is not the right fit for the audience or the audience doesn't trust you, you can shout and shout and have the most compelling graphics and videos and sales presentations and, and you still will be surprised at how few sales you get. So it's not about shouting, persuasion, tactics, scarcity, all that stuff. That stuff can amplify the sales. I don't think it amplifies it in a good way because it's not a long-term loyalty builder, but if you're always just trying to find alignment, if you're trying to find, if you find alignment, you can whisper and people, the right people will buy. So anyway, so that's how we do content on Instagram and that's how we also sell on Instagram. So let's talk about the different formats of content and I'm gonna go and share my screen again. Okay, so again, if you have any questions, use the Q&A uh, button and ask questions and Maria, you can interrupt me anytime to just bring in a question because otherwise I talk a mile a minute and I'm just gonna keep talking until you interrupt me. Okay, all right. So the content formats, the ways that you sh share your message or your, your product, okay? It, my recommendation is to use message-based images, okay? And let me actually just kind of go down here to this, uh, to this right here, okay? So message-based images are what, well, you know, guess what? I can, I can show you because I try to walk my talk and try to talk my walk. So you can see how I do it here. Message-based images, right? Just an example. Look at this. This is a carousel image post, meaning it's a single post with the entire message as a series of images. And guess what? It does really, really well. Okay, so it's like the entire short article is chopped up into these images and it's a carousel post. And that's what I consider a message based image. And I really, uh, I really recommend that because it has a wider appeal, meaning, meaning that uh, when you can run Instagram ads on these things and the people who are the right fit. So, so here's the difference. Running an Instagram ad on a beautiful image, you get lots of likes because even people who didn't even read the caption, it's a beautiful image. Who, who can argue with this beautiful mountain or this inspiring looking person or whatever it may be? These wonderful colors, who can, who can argue with that? No one can argue, so everyone clicks like. But now you're building an audience that's not the right audience because Instagram ads, it's about, you know, getting the right people to reach you, or sorry, reaching the right people, uh, getting them to engage. And then that's the cool audience. And then you have, you run warm audience ads, which are basically the people who already engaged within the last, you can define your warm audience as 30 days or 60 days or whatever. I define it as 60 days. The people who have engaged within the last two months of my stuff, they're gonna see my warm ads, meaning they're gonna see uh, my nurturing messages again and again, because I'm just trying to help them out, trying to develop a relationship with them, right? At mass, at scale, which is really, I think the, the most authentic promise of marketing is you know, kind of build, build uh, benefit at scale, right? Relationships at scale. So, all right, let me go back to this. So message-based images has the widest appeal. It's easiest to reach people compared to videos. Like I said, most of us don't have the budget for uh, spending hundreds or thousands on a one minute video because your video ads on Instagram can only be one minute long. 
Okay. So yeah, anyway, so, so most of our, most of the time we make videos where we're talking or we, we have our team or ourselves shoot the video. So it's not going to really be, have a wide appeal. So that's why I recommend message-based images at the bottom of the pyramid to reach the most people, cool audiences. And then, and then, um, uh, you know, the, the, the second level, you know, you, you're basically going from wider appeal to the top of the pyramid, which is truer fans. I like this imagery better, climbing the mountain, climbing the pyramid better than funnel, <laughs> okay? Typical, I know, all the marketers are trained in funnels. Even Facebook uses the term funnel marketing, all that stuff. And funnel is a very conventional term in marketing, and I hate it. Because what, what, what is a funnel? If you're in my funnel, what does that mean? I'm trying to squeeze you and really squeeze the dollars out of you, right? It's really, it's really cynical way. It's like you're squeezing people, you're filtering people out of like, oh, funnel leaks. The funnel leaks are the people who are the wrong people. It's always all talking about human beings as if they're just numbers and numbers to be manipulated rather than, hey, let's use a more inspiring uh, uh, metaphor. How about people climbing a mountain together? How about that? How about people you know, becoming stronger and more inspired as they climb a mountain together? How's that, right? To the peak, like having a peak experience as a result. So you use Wes's based images for, for ads. You use videos, okay, it's for cool ads, okay? Reaching new people with message-based images, ideally using Instagram ads, okay? And then you nurture that, uh, that warmer audience with one-minute videos, again, message-based. If you look at my one-minute videos, they are message-based. And then at the very top are your truest fans. They're the ones who are going to consume your stories and also to direct message you and just kind of start that one-on-one -on -one conversation. All right? Okay. So, um, excuse me, I think my, my alarm, you're hearing some birds here, that's my alarm. Okay, so let's keep going here. Strategy for stories and highlights. And now this is something I wanted to share with you because a lot of people are confused by Instagram stories. They're like, what's the point, George? Instagram stories are only 24 hours long. I spent time creating a story, it goes away in 24 hours. What's the point? Is there a better way, a more sustainable way? Yes, there is. So this is how I recommend uh, using stories. So you first make an IGTV. Now IGTV is the long format. There are two, and I, sorry, I, I scroll past this really quick. Videos have basically three formats, um, and I really should create one minute shorts, okay? One, just one minute videos, one minute. These are the three formats. Instagram Live, it's kind of like Facebook Live, but you do it on Instagram, and you can do Instagram Live for, I believe, up to 60 minutes. Uh, but I would just recommend that you, whenever you do an Instagram video, just try to keep it under 10 minutes. I think just that's the, you know, um, what do you call it, the, the attention span of, of Instagram viewers, okay? So one, uh, ten, up to 10 minute live videos, which can then be uh, automatically or right after you make a live video, you have the option of posting it as an IGTV. What is IGTV? IGTV is Instagram trying to compete with like, you know, Twitter videos and YouTube videos and TikTok. Well, now there's, there's Instagram Reels, which is really competing with TikTok. But IGTV is basically Instagram's video platform. IGTV videos can be up to 60 minutes long if you upload it from, from the desktop, okay, using Creator Studio. But on the phone, I think you can upload up to 15 minutes. Like I said, if you just keep your videos under 10 minutes, your long form videos, you're gonna be good. And then there's also a third type of video you can make, which is only one minute long. And that kind of video, you can have the entire video show up on your profile. Now you, can, you might see, well, George, you make a lot of one minute videos. These, most of my videos are actually IGTV or Instagram live videos uploaded IGTV, but these are only, they only show you, oh, actually on the desktop, you can watch the whole thing. But on a mobile, you can watch for 15 seconds, I believe, before they, they have a button that says watch on IGTV and you'll, you'll, you can continue the video. So most of my videos are IGTV, but I do record one minute videos sometimes because I do want to run ads on those at some point. So, okay. So what I recommend is that you make IGTV videos and whatever IGTV videos of yours does the best, meaning gets the most response, gets the most likes, and uh, let's just say the most likes, okay? Then the best of those videos, you make an, an, an Instagram story, okay? You make an IG story. And then with Instagram stories, you can, you can ask them to swipe up Okay, swipe up to go to an IGTV video. So you can swipe up and they'll instantly be watching that IGTV video that you link to. Now with Instagram, once you get to 10,000 followers or more, 
you can actually ask them in a story to swipe up to go to your website, to, get any, to go to any link on any website. Typically, it's some web page on your, on your site. But you need 10,000 followers for that kind of swipe up story. With those of us, all of us, who have less than 10,000, we can ask them to swipe up to watch an IGTV video that you can, you can link to it easily. So, so that's the strategy, is, is to create a story, ask them to swipe up to a really good IGTV video, and then you add it as a profile highlight. What is a profile highlight? When you go to my Instagram, you can see this. Profile highlight, look at this. I have th these bubbles at the top of an Instagram profile are called highlights. And if you go to any of my highlights, they are basically IG stories that people, I ask them to swipe up. By the way, um, I, I'm, on a, I'm on a desktop showing you this, so I don't think I can, I can show you how the swipe up action works. Most people look at Instagram on the phone, so this problem is not gonna, you know, most people don't serve Instagram on a computer, they do it on the phone. So if you go to my Instagram profile, you can go to my stories and you can swipe up to watch uh, to, to watch my IG, to, uh, my IGTV, and these are all different in Instagram stories. And so even though Instagram stories typically expire in 24 hours, the great thing is once you add it to your profile highlight, it stays there forever. So it's a truly sustainable story strategy. So it's like you go through all the work of creating something, you might as well have it up there uh, that you're proud of. Okay, so let's keep going on our um, uh, document here. And uh, also, um, yeah, sometimes you might want to make a story, an Instagram story about why they should click on the link in your bio, who should click on it and why, and that you can also add it to a profile highlight. Anyway, okay, let's keep going here. So how does Facebook and Instagram uh, relate to each other? Um, because I do use them both uh, for, for marketing, and I think it's a good idea to market. Uh, market. Uh, so basically, I use Instagram to have new and targeted audiences discover me. So, so, so I find that Instagram ads is much easier to reach the right people compared to Facebook ads. There are many reasons for this, but that's what I've discovered over, over the past couple, uh, especially this year, I've been really active with Instagram ads. So this year I'm like, oh my gosh, every time I run an Instagram ad, I reach the, the best people sooner compared to Facebook ads, really irrelevant people, people who are relevant to my business. So I, I, I like, this, having people discover me and nurturing them via Instagram. And then when they surf Facebook, right, they will also see my Facebook ads, which are further nurturing. And also I do most of my selling on Facebook. Why is that? Because I've noticed that I think I would, my guess is this is true. You can tell me if you agree or not. When people are on Facebook, they're more patient than they are when they're on Instagram. Or maybe I'll flip that around. When people are on Instagram, they're less patient compared to Facebook because Facebook, people know they read articles, right? They watch longer videos. Uh, they're engaging. You're often at the computer, sometimes at the phone. But on Instagram, they're there looking at pretty pictures, quick videos, reels, you know, things like that. So what happens is when people engage with your Instagram posts, they are automatically included in what's called your Facebook warm advertising audience, meaning you can now run ads on Facebook to people who engaged with your Instagram posts. So people who use Instagram, a lot of them use Facebook. In fact, in, in, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram's audience, total audience is about 40% that of Facebook's audience. So still a lot of people, but chances are a lot of the Instagram users, not all of them use Facebook as well. So have people discover you via Instagram and then continue nurturing them on Facebook. And then you can sell your product and services on Facebook while they have a little bit more patience to look at stuff, especially if they're more likely to be at the computer. So with that, I wanna, sh uh, I wanna just um, kind of finish up. If you want to you know, take my step-by-step uh, -step videos on how to do all this with a lot of nuances and details and you know, documents. I have a whole Instagram course, or if you get my Facebook ads course, it comes with the Instagram course. So you can kind of learn both at the same time. But other than that, that's all I've got for you. And I, now I'm really open to your questions. I didn't want to, I don't want to like go too much into just lecturing. I, so let's do questions. I'm happy to answer as many questions as uh, we have time for. Wow, George, this has been fantastic. We have so many questions, both from the pre-registration and live questions. 
Um, and I would ask, so everyone, first and foremost, I can say, study what George does. Find George, study what George does, because it will tell you and answer so many of your questions, first and foremost. Second, as we are answering questions, um, Isis, as you have seen in the chat, she will share a survey link. It will give George feedback about what else you'd like to hear from him, what you'd like to hear from, uh, from NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center. Please fill that out while you are listening to Q&A. We have quite a few minutes, almost 20 minutes for Q&A. We have so many questions, so let's get to it. Um, George, first and foremost, thank you so much for sharing all that content. Yeah, Amazing. I hope that helps Amazing. as an outline anyway. Absolutely, and I see so many people active in the documents and in the chat. So uh, one of the biggest questions that I'm, I'm going to put together a few of the questions that I'm seeing here as an early stage founder who might have multiple products and or a personal and business account, what would be a great strategy? Do we keep our accounts separate, personal business or separate business accounts for different products? Should we combine these things? Yeah, that's a really great question. So, you know, it's, it's really hard to answer that without seeing the person's situation and looking, looking at the accounts. Of course, I, 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 I like to keep things simple. So I just have one Instagram account. Um, I don't really post personal things there, but if you, so, so here's, here's like kind of, there's, there's two aspects to this question. One is the consumption of Instagram, right? Like if you're following friends and you have your own personal interests and you're following, it's okay to be liking from, from any profile. I mean, as long as it's not, you know, too um, obscene or inappropriate, <laughs> people won't see, well, this company like this, that's kind of weird. <laughs> but as long as it's yeah, mostly, uh, mostly appropriate, then it's okay to use your one single account to be liking different things because no one, no one, uh, it, it's, it's not like Facebook where if you like something on Facebook, your network, your, uh, your, your, uh, audience might see that you liked it. They might see a Facebook post seeing that you liked something, same thing on, on LinkedIn, on Instagram. It doesn't work that way. You can like as many things as you want and none of your followers know that you liked anything. It's only the people who follow that post that who follow that other person may see all the numbers of people who liked it and you're one of them. That, that's it. That's it. So, so I would encourage you to keep things simple. If you're just consuming it for personal reasons, you can use your business account. By the way, um, if you have a personal Instagram account, you can easily transition it with a few clicks to a business account. And you kind of have to do that if you want to start running Instagram ads. Um, if in, in the question of whether you want to post personal things, Here's the thing, Instagram stories is a really great feature to kind of reach your personal friends and family without, um, you know, without posting it publicly forever for, every, for everyone. So you could still use that one account, but when you wanna share like, oh, something about your kids or something about your personal life, just create an Instagram story, a quick video or whatever. And when you say send to, you, there's a category called close friends. So on Instagram, you can organize your close friend. You can organize a category called close friends, just your personal, you know, people that you just want to see the most personal stories. And you, when you share stories, share it to just those close friends, and only they will see it when they serve Instagram, at least in the 24-hour time period. Um, and then, so that's like the simplest way. But if you are very active personally and on business, then of course you have to have two accounts, and you know, then you have to complicate things a little bit there. But in terms of whether or not a business should have multiple accounts for multiple product lines, I guess if you're Procter & Gamble, <laughs> you have like very different product lines, sure. But I think most of us, uh, the product lines aren't that different. I mean, the audience is more or less the same. So I would just try to, like I said, keep it as simple as possible. Um, but, you know, there are cases where it makes sense. Wonderful. Thank you, George. So in a similar vein, how do we balance... Or what percentages might we balance telling a story versus selling directly about our product on Instagram? So let's say we have a video that we are recording and we are talking about ourselves as the founder or as an entrepreneur. Um, what is the even or what is a good balance that we can achieve between selling and explaining? Right. Yeah, no, it's great. Uh, um, I, you know, the 80-20 rule is really handy here. I mean, really, if you just say oh, about 80% of the time, about four out of five posts uh, are you know serving the audience with some 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 helpful or inspiring or entertaining content? So it could be get yeah, helpful and you know basically helpful or entertaining. Okay, um, eighty percent of of your posts, and then twenty percent can be selling something. I think that's perfectly acceptable. Yeah. 
Wonderful, thank you. So we have a question from Sam. George said 20% of his ad budget is focused on driving sales and that he sees between 200 and 400% ROI at times. Is that ROI calculated based on the 20% of ads focused on sales or is it the 100% including 80% not focused on sales? Oh, I love that question. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> math person here. Um, it is based on the just the 20%. Well, actually, no, I, I, I have to take it back. Um, it depends on which month and how I calculate it. Uh, but I just want to be conservative and say that let's just count it as the 20% focus on sales. But, but the bottom line is don't, don't go away and go, Hey, marketing expert says you're going to get two to 400%. Now I can promise that to people. No, don't, don't do that because who knows you might be getting 20% ROI. I don't know. You have to test, right? So like whenever I run an Instagram ad to sell something, my rule of thumb is basically, I use the budget for one sale first. So at least I break even. And if I'm breaking even, then I'm like, okay, well, at least I broke even. I'm gonna up the budget. And now it's gonna be, you know, if, if, if a product is $50, let's say, okay, I'm gonna do a $50 you know, campaign or maybe two $25 campaigns. See if I sell one, I usually sell at least one. Like, oh, great, okay, now I'm gonna spend $100. And I would edge up that way instead of going, hey, we're gonna get two to 400%, so let's spend all our money, you know? So yeah, so it's better because some products, like I said, are not the right fit for the audience or maybe the creative, the, the, the image or the video is just not the right fit um, for the audience. That's why it's better to test things rather than kind of go there slowly. But again, good principle, just what is the cost of one sale? If we can break even, then let's, let's increase that. Thank you. And then actually, similar to the testing comment that you just made, George, when do you think would be great times to post on Instagram and how might I test this? Do you have any advice around this? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Instagram gives us uh, stats, actually. Uh, once you start posting, uh, you can look at your, go to your profile, click on the three bars on the top right, click on insights. And you can literally see, if you scroll down far enough and look at the audience, you can literally see uh, when your audience is most active, which days and which hours they're most active on Instagram. Having said that, okay, having said that, the reality is that no matter when you post something, if it goes viral, it goes viral even days later. So if you go to the Explorer, Instagram Explorer page, which is when you click on the when you're in the Instagram app and you click on the little um, magnifying glass, the search icon on the bottom, that's the explore page. You'll notice that some of the posts, if you keep clicking through, some of these are days old. Okay. So it's like, how can it be days old? It, it, so does that mean there's no ideal time and place? Because that person could have posted that at 3am five days ago and it's still showing up on explore or it's showing up on your timeline as you're scrolling. So, so thankfully, right? Thankfully, there really is no, yes, if you're, a, if you're a big company and every little bit makes a difference, yes, of course, notice when the days and times are and try to post at those times. But for most of us who are small businesses or solopreneurs, we don't have the bandwidth to be planning those things. And thank goodness we don't have to because Instagram will surface the, the posts that get, that get great engagement no matter when you post it, no matter when and what day, what time, 3 a.m., on, on you know, Christmas Eve or whatever, it doesn't matter. It will do well if it does well, so. Thank you, George. We have a few questions around how are you designing some of the visuals for your Insta ads? I'm curious if you have any recommendations on platforms. Sure. Yeah, so this is, my, this is where the 20% where I sell you my course right now. Um, but really in my Instagram course, I literally show you exactly step-by-step -step how I do it. But I, I just use Canva. It's very simple. Canva, C-A-N-V-A. Most of you probably know Canva. It's a free tool. I'm on the free plan of Canva. Uh, so it's very, you know, it's free. So yeah, I, I just use Canva to design those images. And once I've designed one, then I can just copy the same image next time I go in. And, and it's just, you know, editing it, changing, changing out the background color and, you know, changing out the words or whatever, so. Perfect. We love Canva too, I will say. Okay, mm -hmm. next up. Has your, has your Instagram marketing strategy changed, if at all, since COVID-19? And if so, how has it changed? 
Yeah, I the, honestly, the biggest change since COVID-19 I've noticed, not just on Instagram, but on all platforms, is that there is a lot more attention now. Like my videos, uh, because I'm, I do video as well. Um, and by the way, uh, while I'm speaking, I'd love for you to vote on this third poll, okay? The poll is, um, and I'm trying to remember the exact question in the poll, but something like, oh, there you go, thank you. Thank you, Isis. How often do you speak or teach on video? How often do you speak or teach using video? Uh, not yet, number one, or second is occasionally, or third is consistently. And I'm just curious what your, what your practice is, because, um, it's very useful uh, to, to nurture warm audiences using video. So um, yeah, I, video, my, my videos have gotten something like 50%. I looked at the stats. It's basically, it's somewhere between a third and 50% higher watch time. So people are watching my videos longer. And, and very importantly, the, ad, uh, the ads is much cheaper than before COVID um, happened. So up to, up to now, up to, up to you know, February, March of 2020, the Facebook, Instagram ads uh, have been consistently increasing over the years. And then suddenly, just like with the stock market, um, dramatic drop in, in uh, so it's much cheaper for us now to run Instagram and Facebook ads. You can reach a lot more people at cheaper than you, you could last year. But unlike the stock market, it hasn't recovered. It's still, it's, well, it has recovered a little bit, but it's still cheaper to run Instagram or Facebook ads today than it was in 2019. So I would say go for it. You should do it um, because otherwise it's one of the best uses of your advertising money. And George, to that point, we have a lot of questions about consistency, what you might consider to be consistent. Um, if you have recommendations around, you know, the number of times to post, I know you've already answered when, when a good time might be to post, but consistency seems yeah. to be a, a topic that keeps coming totally. up. That's great, thank you. Um, so the simplest principle, thank goodness, is up to once a day, post on Instagram, whether it's an image post or, or a video. Um, and that's how you'll see me do it. I don't do it every single day, I don't do it seven days a week. I you know, basically do it Monday, Tuesdays, sometimes Wednesdays, but Monday, Tuesdays, Thursday, Fridays, it's just my content rhythm. It's not necessarily those are the best days because your audience might be surfing it more on Sundays or Saturdays. So, but like I said, it doesn't matter if, if a piece of content is the right fit for the audience, they're going to see it whenever they log in, they're going to see your post, even if it's from five days ago. So um, my suggestion is, listen, with consistency of content, it's really about getting to a stable rhythm and then going farther from there. So maybe you would be creating on one day, drafting something on one day, and then the next day you edit and post it. And that's a really good rhythm. So then maybe you post something every other day and that might be a good place to start. Um, if you are very, very busy, maybe you only do one post a week and you just, you know, on a Wednesday evening, you draft something and on a Saturday you post it, whatever it may be. But I think once a week is, is, a, is a really a good bare minimum and then try to get up to once a day. And if you've gotten once a day, you should just relax and go do something else. So. Thank you, George. We have a question from Aya. How to make my content more discoverable? I think you may have answered this and how, how to think about creating hashtags on Instagram. Yeah, it's so great. So we're right on because I was just thinking I haven't talked enough about hashtags yet. So thank you for that question. So, so yeah, hashtags are the most common way to get things discovered. The problem with hashtags is that most people use popular ones than ones that are not really very well niched for them. And so hashtag love, hashtag happy, hashtag, you know, um, go get it. I don't know, whatever. I, I don't even know the most popular ones because I don't use them. But, but um, and then they get, what's up, George? I got hundreds of likes on this post. Use hashtags. How come you don't use hashtags, George? Well, I said it at the beginning of this presentation, hashtags will get you the wrong followers. And then now when you're doing Instagram warm audience ads, you have to spend more money reaching the wrong people. And then your organic posts are not getting the ones that are related to your business are not getting the right kind of engagement. And you're like devastated. How come only when I post myself in a beautiful style and using great hashtags and I get, no, it, it, it's, it's really silly. The whole hashtag thing. So it's not silly in my Instagram course. I actually teach you how to test hashtags one at a time so that you can do it more thoughtfully. I teach that, but I also teach the fact that 
I don't use hashtags because time management wise, I think for those of us who have a budget for advertising, and I, when I say budget, I don't mean $500 a month or $5,000 a month, start with $30 a month. If you could spend 30, three zero, okay? Three zero dollars a month on advertising for Instagram, that's, you're gonna be reaching 3,000 targeted people per month or 1,000 people three times. Targeted people per month, $30. $30. When you try to reach 3,000 targeted people using hashtags per month, God, you're gonna be doing a whole lot of work and you're gonna be also reaching a lot of the wrong people. So I'm just saying, listen, for time management, why don't we just run Instagram ads? Why are we working so, so, so damn hard on hashtags and making it look spammy also? Because hashtags look spammy, right? If you, most people use a bunch of them and they don't put it in the first comment, they put it right in their caption, which is another thing. It's like, if you're gonna use hashtags, put it in the first comment not in the caption it's not in the written caption itself but long story short save time use ig ads rather than the hashtags so but but hashtags however i think are good for connecting with colleagues with potential collaborators you can search the hashtag on instagram and see if you you kind of any posts uh you feel like a good energy that that company that brand that person might be good to collaborate with maybe then you can interview each other on instagram live ig instagram live you can interview you can invite people and have like a top and bottom person and you can interview people so hashtags could be a great community i think of hashtags as a community of people to interact with rather than trying to edge yourself oh look at me look at me that's what everyone does hashtags for. oh look at me look at me but yeah you could do that or you could just use ads but much more efficient so much strategy, George. Oh my goodness. So fantastic. Uh, and I just want to let you know, so many people are saying, thank you so much. This has been brilliant. Some people did have to hop off a little bit early, um, but I want you to know their gratitude. I think we have time for one more question. Someone has a very specific question about reels and how to use and win on this. My understanding is that with any platform in general, it is algorithmed to highlight new features. Any suggestions on how to win with Reels? Yeah, it's a great question. So Reels is fairly new on Instagram. I mean, it's, I think it's within a month or two. So I, um, I haven't honestly experimented with Reels. I've seen some of my clients do it. And essentially, I think, it's, uh, I think it's around 10 to 15 second video, basically, is what a Reel is. And so, yeah, I've seen some clients do it well, and they just basically give a 10 to 15 second message. I mean, that's, it. that's it. Or something, like I said, you can make reels came, they're trying to borrow, they're trying to, you know, compete with TikTok, right? So it's usually like dance videos or like some really funny thing or cool thing or something like that. So, so for those of us who are more of like message based, want to get a message across, yeah, 10, 15 seconds to kind of inspirational message. You should give it a try because yes, because it's new, um, they are highlighting that in the Instagram explore tab and they're trying to highlight that more on, in the algorithm. So yeah, you could do it. Uh, for me, I'm just, you know, I think what I'm doing right now is working really well. So uh, I'm not jumping on that bandwagon yet. I, I, I'm no longer an early adopter. This is a funny thing. I used to be an early adopter for lots of technologies. And over time, I just kind of got tired of testing things for people. So I said, no, I'm just going to use things that are going to be around for a long time. I'm, Reels are probably going to be around given TikTok's popularity. So yeah, if you enjoy it, give it a try. The cool thing about Reel is that it's, you know, it's a short, tiny video and you can add like elements after you record that segment, you can add like words or elements to it to make it look cool. You can look at the Instagram explore tab, go to, go to Instagram, click on search to kind of see um, how some people do it and get some inspiration and have fun with it. I mean, ultimately, and this is a good, good way to end, if you can have fun using Instagram, you're more likely going to keep using it. So yes, try to have fun doing this stuff and enjoy it, see how other people do it, support them, and then do yours and you'll get supported back. So. George, thank you so, so much. Everyone, thank you so much for attending. We would love again for you to fill out the survey. Let George know what you thought of this webinar and let NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center know who else we could bring to the table and what else George could cover on our platform. And again, George, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to our community, to share your insights and to set such a great overview for all of us. On behalf of NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center and everyone in attendance today, we sincerely thank you for joining us.
And finally, we have a few upcoming events. Please, we would love to see you and have you join us for this coming Thursday, September 10th, Public Relations for Early Stage Startups. And next Thursday, September 17th, Innovative Marketing Tactics Through the Funding Cycle. Again, George, thank you so much for, for joining us and all of you still in attendance, please study and follow George. He is an incredible, genuine human and has some great strategies to share. And we look forward to seeing all of you again soon. Thank you so much.